Hello. Um, I am becoming aware that I don't know very much at all. And the chances are that some of the things that I'm reasoning out here uh, are probably wrong. And I realize that. Okay, <laughs> so with that said, I'd like to talk about sustainability a little bit. We live in an unsustainable world system. How so? While the resources we've traditionally used to continue our way of living are showing signs of becoming scarce. This is dire consequences for not only the organisms that are considered resources to us, but for billions of people today. The technology and aid organizations and development theories that we've created to fix this scarcity and also fix its consequences, they're problematic because they tend to also use up the same resources so it just becomes the same problem. I'm pointing this out because these are attempts to find solutions within our current world system, and I'm saying that the system itself is unsustainable. I think that our current world system is a product of human nature. I've heard people say that the root of unsustainability is the industrial revolution with the advent of urban lifestyle, or that organized religion promoted man's superiority over nature. Globalization surely has a part in this, so that means we should probably look at colonization as well. It gets really complex. But if you go really big picture here, unsustainability's origin lies within a human characteristic. Right? Greed. And don't get defensive, I'm not blaming anybody in particular. We live in a world system where we always want more. But is greed human nature? I say no, because for 40,000 years, everyone lived in hunter-gatherer communities, and contrary to popular belief, they led lives of relative health and gender and class equality with lots of free time. So greed wasn't really necessary. So when did we develop greed? Well, that would be somewhere between 10 and 5,000 years ago when we developed ownership. Why was that? Well, that was the beginning of agriculture. And as this new system developed, being successful meant having land, because that's how you got your food now. And you would obviously want your children to do well and therefore have land, so it made sense that, one, you should give your children your land when you die, and then they'll have land. And two, if you get more land while you're alive, then you can give more land to your kids when you die, and then they'll have more land and do better at life. Ownership of land meant that people could store food also, and this became the new human expression of successful survival, not only caring for your children by making sure that they have a way of getting food after you're gone, but also over time as these children grew and repeated the process, having a lot of food. And that changed everything. At that point, success, and by association, happiness, became about gaining more. The origin of agriculture is also where our relationship with the land, of course, completely changed. It's when we stopped living within ecosystems and started just using them as resources for ourselves. So from there, greed increases. And so does free time for a whole lot more people. Not the farmers, but other people who now receive food from the farmers. And they get to diversify an occupation, and the value of greed spreads to the new worlds of exploration and academia, where people with free time are curious about the world around them and want to know increasingly more. Were people before ownership curious about the world? I'm going to say yes, because I know of myths and stories of origin within hunter-gatherer societies. But did they thirst for knowledge? And could they even apply an idea of ownership that didn't exist yet to that knowledge that they acquired? Now they probably wouldn't even say acquired. So people are wanting to learn more and explore more. And wherever they go, they claim. Because now they just want it. And they don't have particularly any reason for wanting. They just know that more is better. And from here, springs forth colonialism, war, manifest destiny, industrialization, and from there big industry and globalization and the consumer culture. And it turns out that um, some greedy people have thought to take advantage of the greed of billions of people to make money for themselves and it actually, it actually works rather well for them. And because it works well, they cultivate it. We are influenced psychologically all the time and we come away valuing consumerism believing that we are caring for ourselves our families our communities our world by participating in this system 
This is coupled with the fact that our increase in medical knowledge has stopped human populations from remaining in equilibrium like any other species population ungreatly affected by humanity. Exponential population increase has become a huge problem. And I'm saying this unemotionally, but I don't even know if I could agree theoretically that we should stop saving people from dying of their ailments. And I would think that a vast majority of the world's population would also have a very compelling ethical determination to continue to help the injured and diseased and dying. So, when I say that our unsustainable world system stems from human nature, I'm not talking about greed, because that's not the root. I'm saying that our unsustainable world system stems from our inherent responsibility we feel towards the ones we love to take care of them. Because we have the ability to save lives, we feel compelled to when we can. And gaining more has become the accepted way to provide one's children and therefore one's lineage. Which, if you stick with me, you'll notice sounds a lot like reasoning for the creation of a wor sustainable world system. Today, what we have is an exponentially growing world that is increasingly exposed and indoctrinated into embracing the Western value for unending growth for everything, but mainly money. And maybe it was the way I explained it happening or some other way, but this is how it is. And because it doesn't occur to most that the current ideology is not the way it has to be, this ideology is not how it used to be, and indeed not how it can possibly be in the future, this current world system continues because the want for more is a value passed on to our children via ourselves, education systems, the messages of the media, and of advertisements. The difference between your child learning from you and from most everyone else, possibly excluding their peers, is that most everyone else is or wants to be making money from teaching your children. Even people with the best of intentions, and this is sort of my point, have to be influenced by this, and it flaws our judgment to the point that we believe our judgment cannot be flawed. And that small percentage that make much more money than everyone else they have families that they all love, I'm sure. And I don't feel comfortable saying that they are completely removed from reality when they don't donate a large portion of their savings to world development because it implies that they're the only ones. It's more like they're creating their own reality and we're all living in it. Their reality is this materialistic haven we know about and are concerned for billions of people living in poverty, but this materialistic haven reality says that they exist as a separate and unrelated entity. Remember when I was pointing out that most people would have a serious ethical dilemma over letting someone die if the knowledge was available to save them? I believe that, and yet I also believe that billions of people are allowed to live and die in a poverty trap that could be avoided if there were a conscious effort not to go out across the globe and lift the poor from their own drudgery, but to change the way that we ourselves think and behave at home. If you think I'm being drastic by blaming ourselves for the poor quality of life of the majority of humanity, consider as only one small example of our ethical disconnect. Americans' apparent knowledge of food and water scarcity, and then pair it with the cultural experience of dining out at an American restaurant. If orders are incorrect, it is expected that the kitchen remake their food, and the incorrect order is thrown out. Many people take their leftovers with them, but just as many leave their food on the table to be thrown out. I find the unthinking waste of water even more disturbing in the undrunk water and other beverages ordered and left by customers and in the restaurant owners who continue what is seen as a policy of good service so as to draw the customers back. It's not just a wasted glass of water that bothers me so much as the oblivious lifestyle of the average American and the consequences that it holds. So what do we do? Everyone go back to being hunter-gatherers? That's not really possible. Everyone give up the idea of inheritance? Well, I'm game, but I'm sure those with something to inherit might disagree. I said the root of our unsustainable world system is part of human nature. The instinct to love and the responsibility we feel to the human life around us. 
Because the origin is part of us, I could understand if your next thought is pessimistic. Evolution doesn't plan ahead, and an adaptation that works very well can just as easily work against a species in the future. But humans also have the utilities of reason and logic, and if we didn't collectively have the foresight to see that valuing excess and wealth would eventually run us dry, we have to use what little advantage we have of realizing it now. You know, people toss around the word sustainability like they have no idea what it means. This is what it means. To live sustainably is to first realize that the current idea that you and your children are living successfully, happily, and surviving to bear the next generation through the attainment of monetary and materialistic wealth, that is a manipulation by other people trying to achieve the exact same dream by living in the exact same false ideology. And they, in turn, are manipulated by others. You, in turn, manipulate others as well. The practical aspect of sustainably, sustainability is applying this awareness towards creating a way of life for all humanity that is not only enduring, but healthy and fulfilling as well. The next step in living sustainably is to stop participating in the old world system by rethinking consumption and by stopping the perpetuation of the myth in the education of the next generation. Sustainability is not actually just focused on saving the environment. Though awareness of how you're a part of the environment is most definitely essential and that awareness usually causes people to place higher value in it. But no, this is aimed at satisfying our need to care for those close to us, and it's what we've been trying to do all along. This value and community that we have is still important in the idea of sustainability as well, because solutions to living healthfully and happily, they're not going to be the same from region to region. And I think we'll find that even in this age of global community, the best way to fulfill responsibility to those we care for across the world is to think locally. Our capabilities to love and to care remain intact. And I know it has to be frustrating and confusing for many like myself that the world seems just as corrupt and broken as ever, despite the undoubtedly sincere concern many individuals share. The reason is that the system does not work, guys, and trying to find solution for the symptoms without treating the cause of these ills is futile. Um, Thank you so much for listening, and hey, pass it on.